So welcome to the screencast for 9.2. We just learned in 9.1 that life for most of the time of the Earth's history was very, very simple and in the ocean. It was single-celled, or and it was probably looking like bacteria, but then eukaryotic cells, a little bit bigger cells, started to evolve. But still, life was simple. It was in the ocean for pretty much the first almost three and a half to four billion years of the planet. So in this section, we're going to look at the evolution of multicellular life. A lot of this life you'll be more familiar with. And we're going to look at uh, the important events of the late Precambrian. We're going to give you an overview of the Paleozoic, the Mesozoic, and the Cenozoic eras. So let's return to this diagram. Remember at the bottom it says the origin of the Earth. That's when our Sun and all the planets formed and that was 4.6 billion years ago. But notice in this Precambrian era, this is a long time, this is almost 4 billion years, even though it's smaller than what's up on top, a lot more happened on top. Um, life very very simple but then right here we had the cambrian explosion and the reason it's called the cambrian explosion is so much life evolved in this time period so that's what we're going to look at now we're going to be looking at the paleozoic era real quickly the mesozoic era and the cenozoic and we're going to take a look at the different forms of life now so much life went on, so much, so many fossils are out there that they had to break the Paleozoic into different periods. So there's the Cambrian, Ordovician, the Silurian, the Devonian, the Carboniferous, the Permian. So let's take a look at what happened on the Earth from the fossil record from 544 million years ago to 245 million years ago. So here is the Cambrian period. So we're going from older to newer down here for each of these. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to read what happened. I'm going to just pick out a, a couple. So in the Silurian period, the ocean's corals appeared and fish continued to evolve. On the land, vascular plants appeared first with special tissues to circulate water. So in the beginning, there weren't even any plants on land. Plants um, devised tissues called vascular tissues. Well, talk about that in chapter 13. But I'd like you to read through and get a sense of what happened, the major things that happened, the major life things that happened in the Paleozoic era. Let's now go to the Mesozoic era. So in the Mesozoic era, probably the only period of time that people know is this one right here, Jurassic. The Jurassic period in the Mesozoic, and the reason people know about it is because some of the largest land animals, some of the most amazing land animals that ever existed on our planet existed during the Jurassic. Yes, it was the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs flourished. So let's take a closer look at that era, the Mesozoic. So here we have the Triassic period, the Jurassic period, and the Cretaceous period. So let's take a look at this one, the Triassic period. This is older, from 245 million years ago to 200 million years ago. The first dinosaurs branched off from reptiles and colonized the land, air, and water. Huge seed plants like conifers uh, dominated the forest, and modern corals, fish, and insects evolved. Pangaea started to separate. Now, some of you know what Pangaea is. That was the massive granite supercontinent that broke apart because of plate tectonics. We really didn't cover it in this course. But now let's get to the Jurassic period from 200 to 145 million years ago. The mass extinction that ended the Triassic up here allowed dinosaurs to flourish in the, Triassic, in the Jurassic period. This was the golden age of dinosaurs. The earliest birds evolved from reptile ancestors, and all the major groups of mammals evolved. But individual mammals uh, were still small in size, so they were still mouse-like in size. Mammals didn't really flourish until the dinosaurs. Notice, uh, till the dinosaurs went away, notice the flowering plants appeared for the first time. And then finally, toward the end of this era, toward the end of the Mesozoic, dinosaurs reached their peak in size and distribution. Uh, the uh, Tyrannosaurus rex is pictured here, weighed at least seven tons, an amazing amount of weight. By the end of the Cretaceous, the continents were uh, close to their present locations, and the period ended with the dramatic extinction of dinosaurs. So dinosaurs lived during the Jurassic and the Cretaceous, but a huge extinction event happened. And our best guess is that this was a massive meteor that hit around the Yucatan. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. 
The last era that we're going to look at is the era that we live in right now, the Cenozoic. And this goes back to about 65 million years ago, and it's divided into the tertiary and quaternary periods. So we're looking at the most recent life, and in this diagram, you're going to be familiar with a lot of the life. So let's go to the tertiary period, which is from 65 million years ago to 1.8 million years ago. The Earth's climate was generally warm. Mammals evolved to fill virtually all the niches vacated by the dinosaurs after their mass extinction event, and many mammals increased in size. Mammals called primates evolved, including human ancestors. Modern rainforests and grasslands appeared, and flowering plants and insects were numerous and widespread. Notice that there are primates, but we haven't, humans haven't evolved yet. We have no fossil evidence of humans in this period. A little later on, we do. So let's go down here to the quaternary period. Earth's climate cooled, series of ice ages. This created land bridges, allowing animals to move to new areas. Some mammals, like woolly mammoths shown here, adapted and became very large with thick fur. Other animals moved closer to the equator. One of the things they don't mention in your textbook, and I'd like to bring it up now, and this is from the Smithsonian, one of the best science museums in the world, is that human beings evolved during that time period. And if we go back six million years ago to this tree of life, all of these are hominid. That means human-like um, species that were found on the earth. And they go back about six million years. But no, here's five million years ago, four million years ago, three, two, one million years ago. But you notice that Homo sapiens, that's us, Homo sapiens really didn't show up in the fossil record until about four or five hundred thousand years ago. So we're a relatively new species. But all of these are separate species that have been found all over the earth. There's the Australopithecus, excuse me, Australopithecus group, which is Lucy. There's the Paranthropus group. And the reason I put this in here is a lot of people are not familiar with this. A lot of people think that we've only found Homo sapien fossils, but that's just not true. We found a lot of different ones. This is how we, our family tree, and notice we're using the tree here as the metaphor. You're going to see that in the next section, in section 9.3, about how do we classify all the life that's here. So the su a summary for this, read through the summary. I'm not going to read through all this, but we looked at the Paleozoic era, the Mesozoic, the Cenozoic, and what happened. And then finally, Homo sapiens evolved. Good luck, and we'll move on to 9.3 after this.